My name is Anne. Um, I am a, a guard. I'm a member of the Guard Shikana for um, 24 years. Um, I found out about the cycle because a friend of mine had done it a few years beforehand. Um, he'd been on the, the cycle himself. And um, I just thought it was such a good thing to do, to spread the word. So, uh, like I said, I'm a member of the Guards for a long time now. and. Um, I've had to deal with a lot of things over the years in, in relation to my job and suicide. Um, I was fresh out of Templemore, the Garda Training College in 1995 when one of the first things I had to deal with was a lady who had died by suicide um, in a hotel room and I had stayed with that lady for three hours until the undertakers came. It was hard to deal with because like I said, I was fresh out of the college. It's not something, anything, any sort of training can prepare you for. Um, the lady had died over issues. She had over financial problems and being in that room for three hours um, was hard uh, for a number of reasons. You just felt so sorry for her and her family. Um, and I'll never forget the smell of her perfume was um, quite strong in the room. And uh, while I, mo I moved on, um, the smell of the perfume hit me one day on a bus and um, it actually brought me right back to the scene and I had to, had to get off the bus because I just felt so emotional about it again. That, that was the first thing at work but like there's nothing can prepare you for anything like that. There's nothing um, or prepare you for having to go to a parent's house and the grief that comes with that and it's, it's, really, it's really hard as a first responder and I, I know it, it's hard for everybody but being that person that has to tell that woman that her child is as is dead is just it's just awful. But I guess um, for me, it's you know this is you signed up to be a guard. You signed up for the good as well as the bad and and the, the horrible. But and you put your professional face on and you go out and you do your job and you know, you have your little cry about it afterwards if you need to. But um, it was very different for me last year when I suppose suicide kid knocking a bit closer to home when my friend died. Um, <clears throat> I'll never forget my husband's face when he had to tell me that um, my friend had died and we were on holidays at the time and it was extremely difficult for him. Um, uh, that was February 2018 and uh, um, I had the immediate feelings that you hear about when you know you hear about somebody close to you dying and dying by suicide and I just felt that the, the ground was just following me up and what, what could I have done and all the questions why and what if and um, what could I have made a difference. It's been a year now, um, just over a year since um, my friend died and uh, it's still the devastation and the, the sadness is still very real. Um, I still go to pick the phone up to talk to him uh, as I did last week when I had a question to do with the work. He was a colleague as well as a friend and uh, I tried to call him to help me with something and um, needless to say I was halfway through dialing and I realised he's not there. Last year I, I went on the cycle against suicide because uh, maybe the first reason was a little bit selfish and still is but going to be selfish this year in that it's helping me deal with the grief and the loss of my friend um, and also the big part for me is to help people realise that you know there is help out there and if we can help one person to come out of that feeling that there is nothing for them to live for then it would mean an awful lot to me personally. Um, I wrote a letter to my friend um, last year before I went on the cycle and uh, I have it if you'd like to hear it. Dear Foxy, it's been a rough few months since February the 10th, the day you died by suicide. I won't lie, I'm still very raw and I don't know whether I'm still shocked by your death, angry with you for taking your own life or sad because I'll never see you again or guilty for not being there when you needed someone most. I think it's a bit of all of the above. I miss you my friend, we all do. I miss calling you, asking you how things are and your reply was always tickety-boo or are you well and your response was always I was well once. I miss the chats over the coffee or pints about life, work and the never-ending slagging each other and everyone else. 
There are little things that I notice now, like the amount of times I've picked up the phone to call or text you. I've lost count. I've read the last text we exchanged so many times since you died. Me telling you about my husband getting promoted and you saying, wow, congratulations, he so deserves it. And the final message you sent me was a joke and I didn't respond. And that was nine days before you died. I wonder would it have made a difference if I had. I'll never know, just like no one will ever know why you thought ending your life was the answer to whatever turmoil you had in your head, whatever suffering you were going through. But then speaking of stress or anxiety or depression is so hard, especially as a man, and even worse, as a detective and superintendent in the guards. I wish it wasn't like this. I have lots of wishes, Colin. I wish I could have been your shoulder like you were mine so many, many times. I wish it could, it could have helped you in your loneliest hours. I wish it could have been there on February the 10th to change your mind. And I wish you were still here because then I wouldn't feel so guilty for not knowing how low you were. And I also wish you were still here because then I wouldn't have to be suffering with saddle sores on the cycle against suicide. We were friends for over 22 years, Colin. And during that 22 years, we were colleagues and friends, and I'm forever grateful to God, fate, or whoever I am to be thankful for, for us coming together in life. You taught me, nurtured me, celebrated the most important events in my life, and remained my true friend right to the end. I'm cycling for a cycle against suicide, with Congo, Odd, and the Fat Pagan, and cycling in spirit with us are Fitzy, Mary Dempsey, and Lafbo who couldn't make it this year. We are doing this to remember you, celebrate our friendship, celebrate your life, and most of all, to spread the word that we all wish you heard on February the 10th. That it's okay not to feel okay, and it's absolutely okay to ask for help. Rest in peace, Colin. We all love and miss you. I suppose uh, the main objective of the cycle against suicide is to change the attitudes to suicide. It's not just any one person that's going to be hurt by this. It's far reaching. So I guess what I'd like to see for the cycle against suicide this year is uh, to try and surpass the numbers that we've had, which have been huge. The amount of people who are coming out wearing the jersey and everyone knows that the orange cyclists are about cycling against suicide. Um, the support we get in the villages and towns all over the country is absolutely phenomenal. Like people coming out of their houses on country roads when they know you're passing by, everything. It's just wonderful. Um, but let's try and build it even bigger. Let's try and get as many people out. Let's really try and spread the word. Um, one day, five days, ten, whatever days you can ma manage. It doesn't have to be full ten days of the cycle. Just whatever you can manage. And it's not a thing where, you know, you need to be a super cyclist. I'm not a super cyclist, but you'll get a sore butt, but that's about the height that you'll enjoy it. And you'll enjoy the fun and the camaraderie on the cycle. It's amazing. So please do turn up. And if you can't turn up, turn out and support us along the way. Thank you very much.